Welcome everyone to Creating Procurements Faster with ProcureSight. I'm Ben Allen, Vice President at Appian, responsible for our acquisition solutions. This webinar has been a long time coming, and I don't mean that we were late scheduling it. I mean the idea of the ProcureSight application started well over five years ago. I remember meeting with a senior leader in the Air Force who, when asked about what frustrated him the most about the acquisition process, he said, I don't understand why I can't see what people are buying. Our base is buying road salt or grounds maintenance. Why can't I see what the base 100 miles away is paying? They must be buying similar things, but I have no visibility into it. How they structure the contract, what are the terms, performance characteristics, and we have contracting people buying the same thing as a person sitting three cubes over with no idea the other one exists. Or we have new contracting professionals buying something that we've bought as an organization many times over, and they're reinventing the wheel with every purchase. All this data must be out there. Why am I not getting any value out of it? Our response at the time included talking about data standards and data sharing, integrations from multiple data sources, all things the Appium platform does really well, but ultimately, not all the technology pieces were there yet. Even with the right integrations, search, and reports, you'd still struggle with the data being dirty and requiring human intelligence to sift through it and find commonality. So the idea of accessing and aggregating data was great, but the execution was gonna require more time and effort than you'd expect. And so the problem remained unaddressed. But then came early 2023 and the advent of new, readily accessible, powerful AI models. And now that dirty data that would have required human intelligence could be better addressed with artificial intelligence. And that's when I got really excited about the new value we could deliver in the acquisition process. Those requirements posed years ago by the senior DOD leader were a perfect fit for the emerging AI technology and the Appian suite. So we set out to build ProcureSight on the Appian platform to help revolutionize how procurements are done today. Our goal was to unlock data, make it easily accessible and reusable, so you can answer questions like, who else has bought this item before? How much did they pay? How many responses did they receive? How long did it take to procure? Was it awarded to a small business? How did they articulate their requirements? What acceptance terms did they use? And many, many more. Before I demo ProcureSight, let's take a quick look at the data and some of the problems faced by users leveraging existing tools today. First, the government buys a lot of stuff. Here are just a few of the largest product service categories from 2023. It's an incredibly diverse set of goods and services. And behind each of these procurements is a mountain of required data and documentation, including things like market research, cost estimates, specifications, acquisition plans, milestone plans. Creating these documents while necessary is often time consuming and laborious. And we all know this process can often delay the overall procurement and then ultimately the receipt of a good or a service. And to give you some perspective on the scale, the government has over 200,000 procurement professionals. In 2023, they created over a million contract actions valued at over $700 billion. And each of these procurements is governed by strict federal reporting requirements that dictates that much of this data is posted and reported publicly. When we take a closer look at the data flow, a lot of the data is created during the requirements development phase. And much of that data will end up in the solicitation, including structured data like title, descriptions, agencies, product service codes, as well as unstructured data, statement of works, PWSs, the solicitation itself, and then often gets posted to SAM. In fact, over 24,000 opportunities a month are posted to SAM. That's a lot of data. And then at the end of the process, the contract will be posted to FPDS, and the FPDS data, as well as data from other government sources, is aggregated and made available on USA Spending. The current USA Spending database is over one and a half terabytes. All of this to say, there's a lot of data out there, and it's being posted and aggregated on systems daily. However, those systems are pretty terrible to use if you're a government acquisition professional. First, they weren't really built for you. SAM is decidedly built for the vendor community, so they can discover new opportunities to bid on. The search on SAM and USA spending is pretty frustrating and leaves a lot to be desired. And because solicitation data is posted to SAM and award data is posted in FPDS and eventually USA Spending, you're often searching multiple siloed sources to get the full picture of an acquisition. The UI is disjointed and painful. The structured and unstructured data is difficult to leverage and glean insights from. Forget about identifying meaningful trends. That's completely a manual effort. To address these problems, we wanted to accomplish a number of things with ProcureSight. First, we built it for the federal acquisition workforce. Most, if not all, the other sites out there are either built for the vendor community or for the general public to provide transparency into the government procurement process. Second, we knew we could improve the search experience by providing semantic search. Simple keyword search is far too limiting, and the data sets we're searching on are far too vast for a human to sift through the data manually and assess similarity. The key to better search is more intelligent search. It also doesn't make sense that you have to go to multiple sites. Let's show all the data regarding a given acquisition through a single pane of glass. No more clicking around. And when you find a set of related procurements, let's have the system pull out valuable insights. You shouldn't have to manually look for trends. Much of the above is made possible by the power of AI, helping automate what was once tedious and slow and making it fast and simple. 
And we're not using AI for the sake of using AI. This is AI seamlessly integrated into the data, the process, and the user interface to avoid distraction and provide the maximum value. Now it's time to see ProcureSight in action. To help set the stage, we'll start by very quickly looking at the existing tools that are out there today, and then we'll quickly transition to ProcureSight so you can visually see the difference in both results, user experience, and the value provided to the users. SAM.gov is up first. Let's navigate to Contract Opportunities. I'll go ahead and deselect Active Only, so now we'll get historical results too. Now, when I'm running example searches, I like to use realistic data, and my favorite source for upcoming procurements is the Acquisition Gateway Forecast tool. So I'll just quickly pop over there. You'll see here we have a GSA forecasted opportunity for quartz acoustic paneling. That seems interesting. Let's go ahead and copy the title, and then we'll head back over to Sam and paste it in there. Now we'll click on search, and here are the results, just one. And that's for an IDIQ construction contract. I mean, maybe there's some acoustic panels somewhere in the scope, but it seems unlikely given the description. Over on the left though, you'll see that by default, Sam looks for all words. So often you'll only see limited results with this option. Let's open it up and try any words. Now we see more results, but they still seem pretty unrelated. The first is underwater vehicles. The next is applicant tracking system, then engineering services. We have some spare parts, more engineering services, pretty discouraging results. Let's just pick one to look at so we can see how the data is represented once you drill into the opportunity. This content creator one looks interesting. Maybe they're looking to buy a YouTuber. Now that we're in the opportunity, what's often frustrating is how the information is presented in this narrow band that doesn't logically or visually differentiate any of the data. It just sort of blends together as you scroll. The attachments are at least highlighted at the end. However, viewing and interacting with that data requires you to download the document locally and read or search through it manually. And that's often where the most helpful information actually resides. Overall, not great results or experience in SAM. Now let's look at the next system, USA Spending. USA Spending doesn't have opportunity data, but it does have all the contract award information from FPDS. This is a really useful data set where potentially you can find a lot of important information. We'll begin our search by clicking on Start Searching. Next, not really intuitively, but thankfully I know this site well enough by now, you click on the left to expand the keyword area to enter your text search. Let's try a different search this time. We'll search for Web Conference Tool. Click on the magnifying glass, but that doesn't actually search. I can't tell you how many times I've just stared at a blank results page. Instead, you'll need to click on the submit search to actually search on the keywords you just entered. So now we get back 10 results. They're presented in a table with not a lot of helpful information easily visible from the main view. If you scroll to the right far enough, you'll find more data, but then you'll lose sight of all the information on the left. Let's just pick a couple results and drill into them and see what we find out about web conference tools. Over here on the right, you'll find the description of the award. It's not looking very promising so far. Let's go ahead and read more. And that doesn't really help either. It looks like an engineering services contract that may have the words web, conference, and tool separately somewhere in the long text, but definitely not actually related to a web conference tool. Okay, let's try one more. And this one doesn't look much better. More engineering services with lots of text that apparently leads to false positives in the search. So with these two searches, I think it's safe to say that SAM.gov and USA Spending are frustrating at best. Now let's contrast that experience with ProcureSight. This is the ProcureSight.com homepage. We've made it publicly available to users in a similar fashion to SAM.gov and USA Spending. If you don't have an account yet, you can sign up for one at the top. You just need a .gov or .mil address. I already have an account, so I'm simply going to click on Login. Once you're logged in, there are a number of functional areas and capabilities you can explore from the main page. We'll start with the most often used, search, and then we'll work our way through the other areas. I mentioned earlier in the presentation that we're using AI semantic search to bring back better, more relevant search results. If you're not familiar with semantic search, think of it as a way to search using the meaning of the words and not necessarily the exact words themselves. An example will help illustrate what I mean. Let's search for items to keep my hands warm and see what we get back. And almost magically, we get results back for all sorts of gloves, and lots of them. All great results. None of them using the words I search for, but all very much delivering on the meaning. That's a quick example of the power of semantic search. Now, let's get back to the searches we used earlier on SAM and USA Spending. I'll start first with the GSA requirement for quartz acoustic panelings. These results look much more relevant. The semantic search has identified similarities with courtroom audiovisual setups, which often do involve acoustic treatments. And as we scroll down, we also see results for acoustic panels. And while not specific for a courtroom, still an excellent result to highlight. Then we have a few more AV results. 
and then another acoustic panel result. And this time, not only is ProcureSight highlighting the opportunity, but also the resulting award. Let's click into it for more details. From the summary page, we see the original opportunity details pulled from SAM at the top. It's displayed in a much easier to review way without all that endless scrolling you find in SAM. And after the SAM results, we see the Procure site has linked the opportunity to an award record in USA Spending and provided the details for that award. We see who was awarded to, for how much, peer to performance information, as well as competition information, all incredibly useful as you plan out your new acquisition. Let's go back to the search results. From here, you'll see that we have filters over on the left. Let's filter just on opportunities where ProcureSight also found award details. You'll notice the results automatically update and we have another acoustic wall panel result to review. Again, I'll click on the title and explore the details for this opportunity. Same layout as before, same information at the top and related award details at the bottom. Back at the top, you'll see documents associated with the original solicitation. In SAM, you'd have to download each document to review and manually look for information. And you can still download the documents from ProcureSight, but you can also click on the documents and view them directly in the application. And what's even better is if you don't want to read this 18-page document just to answer a few questions about the requirement, well, you can use AI to chat with a document and ask your questions. Let's start with how will sound absorption be measured? Behind the scenes, the ProcureSight AI reads the document, finds relevant text related to your question, and answers back in plain English. Not only that, it cites exactly where in the document it sourced that information. In this case, it looks like page 7 and 8 have this source information. Let's jump to page 7, and sure enough, we find sound absorption requirements here. Now what if we want to know if there are any eco requirements? Let's try that next. ProcureSight answers, yes, there are eco-friendly requirements, and again, sources where in the document this information can be found. All right, let's do one more. Any fire-resistant requirements? And again, yes, there are, and ProcureSight lists these requirements for you to review along with the document source. Now, how much easier is that than downloading the documents and using Control F to find that information within the document? AI does an amazing job finding information, summarizing it, and maybe most importantly, citing where in the source document it found the information so you as the human in the loop can double check and continue your investigation as necessary. Okay, let's try another search. This time, we'll do the web conference tool search. If you recall, USA spending results were unrelated, but in ProcureSight, we immediately get relevant results. Some use the same words from our search, but many do not, and instead match on the similarity or meaning of the words. Let's go ahead and filter these results some more. This time, we only want to see opportunities where we know the award details and where the original opportunity has documents associated with it. If we wanted to, we could further refine the results based on criteria like agency or fiscal year, and we continue to add new filters based on user feedback. Now that you have really relevant results to review, we still recognize that not every result will match the exact characteristics of your new procurement. Some results are more related than others. To help you track these, we created the concept of collections. In the top right of each result, you'll notice a plus sign. When you click on it, you'll be given the option to add this result to a collection. In this case, I already have a web conference software collection where I'll add this result to. You can continue going down the results and adding more, and when you're ready to review the collection, there's a link in the left navigation to review your collections. You can see here I have four collections started. Each one has varying numbers of related procurements that I've associated with it. Let's look specifically at the web conference software collection. From the collection summary, you'll see all the procurements I've added so far, six in total. But what's really powerful about this view is now that ProcureSight knows these six are the most related to your new procurement, we can begin identifying insights, which you can see here on the right. We show things like average time to award, average award amount, average award length, common set-aside categories, common PSC and NAICS codes. Depending on the collection, you may have more or less of these insights available to you. The goal is to provide you with better context about the potential acquisition process and the market for a given procurement, all without you having to manually compile these metrics. Now let's drill into one of the procurements in the collection. Let's say I'm interested in reviewing statements of work for web conferencing tools. I can see from the document list that there is a statement of work associated with this procurement. And after I click it, I see the document content over on the right. And if this statement of work looks interesting, I can add it to my reference library from the menu in the top right. From here, I can tag the type of document and even add a description to make it easier to review in the future. 
After I click Add, it's now been stored as a reference, and now you can go back to reviewing procurements and identifying other documents. When you're ready to access your reference documents, they're available from the left nav under Documents. Here you can see the one that I just added, as well as two other documents I added previously. As this list grows longer, you can filter on document type, as well as the document name. But just bookmarking documents was not our end goal. With ProcureSite, we want to make it easier to leverage past documents in your new procurements. Our initial approach is centered around document analysis. When you click on Analyze Document, ProcureSite will step you through the process of creating a new template based on a reference document. In this example, we'll do a statement of work. We'll title it Web Conference SOW. ProcureSite notes that there are already two reference documents to use for this analysis. Next, we'll select the document we want to use, and you'll see a preview of the document on the right. When you click Next from the screen, the AI begins reviewing the document and comes back with a template with section titles and questions that you should address in each of the sections based on the source document. So we see a background, an objective, a scope section, each with high-level questions you should answer when creating your new document. This continues for all the sections the AI found when reviewing the source document. Think of this as a writing guide assistant. Finally, when you click Next again, ProcureSite makes the document available as a Word document so you can begin creating your new document offline. If you need to access the template later, it's also available from the top of the document summary page. Now the question I always get is, couldn't AI help me write the document and generate the text for each of these sections? And the answer is 100% yes. AI does a really good job, especially when you're breaking the document into smaller sections, getting feedback from the user, and leveraging previous document content. However, we understand for a government agency to be comfortable with that approach, we need to be working hand-in-hand -hand with the agency CIO's office, the contracting office, and deploying this capability in an agency-specific private AI environment. And we'd love to have that conversation with you and your agency. So please reach out if this is something you'd be interested in discussing. Okay, one final section from the left nav, support. Under the support section, you'll find the user guide. However, we've designed the application to be as intuitive as possible, so most users probably won't need this guide. What I really want to highlight is the contact form. We really want your feedback. That's one of the biggest reasons we released ProcureSite publicly and made it free for .mil and .gov users through 2024. We want your input. We want your suggestions. We're excited about what we can do with AI to help modernize acquisition, and some of the best ideas always come from the field. So please, feel free to reach out to us. We really appreciate the feedback. And it's your feedback that helps grow and refine the ProcureSite capability, which is the final piece of the support section. We have weekly releases based on feedback from users, and at the bottom of this page, you'll see the latest updates, as well as the list of new capabilities that are coming soon. There's a lot to get excited about. Well, that wraps up the ProcureSite demo, but I do have just one more thing. ProcureSite was created to help consolidate data and eliminate the need to visit many different websites. However, it wasn't lost on us that we have in fact created a new website to visit. But what if you didn't have to? ProcureSite joins a family of acquisition solutions created by Appian, and one of those solutions, Requirements Management, is a perfect fit for the data and insights provided by ProcureSite. So we integrated it directly into Requirements Management as a simple add-on subscription. Let's take a quick peek at what that looks like. This is the Requirements Management homepage. I'm logged in as a Program Office user, and I see my in-flight requirements. At the top of this page, you'll notice a new tab called Procurements with options for search, and collections. The search page allows you to directly query ProcureSite without ever leaving requirements management. Let's go ahead and search for something, maybe data migration services. Again, results are displayed directly in requirements management with the same filter and sort options available on the standalone site. But maybe the feature that I'm most excited about is the ability to seamlessly integrate ProcureSite data directly with your new requirements. From the homepage, you'll notice I have a number of draft requirements. Let's take a look at the first one, Water Treatment Services. Clicking on the link takes us to the summary page for the requirement, where all the high-level information about this requirement is displayed, as well as any outstanding tasks. But what you'll also notice is a blue banner at the top alerting the user that the system has identified some similar past procurements related to this new requirement. That's right, the user doesn't even need to manually search. We do it automatically behind the scenes and surface anything relevant to the users. You can view the results by clicking on the View text or by clicking on the New Insights tab at the top of the record. From here, you'll find the top three results as well as the ability to search for more results directly from the new requirement. Let's filter on ones with awards and documents. And now, because we're already on the record, we can simply save any procurements that look most related to our new requirement by clicking on the top right Save button. Let's go ahead and add a few of these to this requirement.
And once you've added a handful, when you navigate back to the Insights tab, all of these safe procurements are immediately available, as well as any insights the system has identified. In this case, average time to award, average award amount, average award length, common set-asides, and common product service codes. So as you can see, with this ProcureSight integration, we're now able to put this incredibly valuable information directly on the requirement record and help both the program office and contracting users make better and faster decisions as they create their new procurements. That concludes the demonstration for today. I want to leave you with one final thought. If, as you were watching this demonstration, you wondered, if ProcureSight can do this with public data sets, could it do something similar with my agency's private data? The answer, not surprisingly, is yes, definitely we can. Part of our motivation for creating ProcureSight was to make these public data sets much more useful, but the other part was to create an easily accessible example of the power of low code coupled with AI and decades of experience delivering acquisition solutions to create something truly transformative. We're excited about what the future brings and even more excited about the continued partnership with the government to create amazing capabilities together. If you're interested in learning more, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to set up a time to talk more specifically about your agency's needs. Thanks for joining us today.